the elevator that could reach space. Tonight, let's imagine something unusual. You step into an elevator, press a button, and instead of heading to another floor, you begin to rise. Past the clouds, above the atmosphere, beyond the blue curve of Earth. Higher and higher until you reach space. No flames, no rockets, just a silent ride into the stars. This is the dream of the space elevator. It sounds like science fiction, and for a long time, it was. But over the years, real scientists, engineers, and researchers have studied the idea seriously. And though it has never been built, the space elevator remains one of the most fascinating possibilities in the history of space exploration. The concept is simple in theory. Instead of launching rockets to escape Earth's gravity, we build a very long cable. One end is anchored to the surface of the Earth. The other end stretches far into space, held taut by a counterweight beyond geosynchronous orbit. The result is a structure that hangs in perfect balance, spinning with the planet. A vehicle called a climber would move slowly up the cable, powered by electricity, solar energy, or lasers from the ground. There would be no need for rocket fuel, no loud takeoffs, no explosive thrust, just a smooth ascent into orbit. The idea dates back more than a century. In 1895, a Russian scientist named Konstantin Tsiolkovsky proposed a structure inspired by the Eiffel Tower that could reach all the way into space. At the time, it was impossible to build. The materials simply did not exist, but the idea stayed alive. In the 1960s and 70s, scientists began to revisit the concept with more serious intent. They explored the physics, the mechanics, and the limits of materials. They realized that a space elevator could work in theory, but there was still one major obstacle. The cable. To support its own weight over such an enormous distance, the cable would have to be incredibly strong and incredibly light, stronger than steel, stronger than any material known at the time. For decades, that problem kept the space elevator in the realm of imagination. Then, in the 1990s, a new material appeared on the horizon carbon nanotubes. These tiny cylinders of carbon atoms were stronger and lighter than anything else ever discovered. In theory, they could support the weight of a space elevator cable. For the first time, people began to ask not just what if, but when. Around the world, researchers began to explore the idea more seriously. NASA held design competitions. Private companies like Liftport announced plans to build prototypes. Japan's space agency set long-term goals. The vision was clear. If we could solve the materials problem, the rest could follow. A space elevator would change everything. It could make space travel far cheaper, safer, and more sustainable. Cargo could be sent to orbit at a fraction of the cost. Satellites, research stations, even people could ride quietly into space. But as the research continued, so did the challenges. Carbon nanotubes were strong, but difficult to produce in long lengths. Later materials like graphene showed promise, but the technology to create a 100,000 kilometer cable did not exist. There were also other problems. The cable would need to survive micrometeorites, extreme weather, and intense radiation. It would need to be kept perfectly balanced with no twisting or swinging. Even small instabilities could lead to disaster. Despite this, the dream remains. In recent years, researchers have begun to explore variations on the idea. Some propose placing the anchor not on the ground, but on a platform floating high in the atmosphere. Others suggest starting small, with elevators on the moon or Mars, where gravity is weaker. The moon elevator, in particular, has gained interest. It could be built with existing materials and would help move cargo between lunar orbit and the surface. It could be a first step toward the larger goal. So far, the space elevator has not left the drawing board, but it has never gone away. It lives in the minds of engineers and in the pages of fiction. It represents a different way of thinking about space, one that values patience over power, precision over explosion. There is something calming about the idea, riding to space slowly, like taking a train through the sky, watching Earth fade below you, layer by layer, moving not with force, but with balance. As you drift off tonight, imagine the elevator cable rising from the surface, stretching through the clouds, shimmering in the light of the sun, a quiet path to the stars, waiting for the world to catch up. Sleep well, 
and let your thoughts rise gently toward whatever lies above.